Simone Geertz, a guest on the Lex Friedman podcast, discussed the importance of finding one's passion in life and the significance of the context surrounding that passion. She emphasized that it is not just about what someone wants to do, but also where and how they want to do it. Geertz explained that she realized building things for others at her job was not giving her the fulfillment she desired, so she changed the context and started building things for herself, which made all the difference. She also talked about how college is not necessary to find one's passion, as it can be discovered in many different contexts. Additionally, Geertz explained that although all of her projects were painful in different ways, the pride she felt after finishing a difficult project made it all worth it. She gave an example of a mechanical table she built, which had two different tabletops that could be switched using a tambour mechanism. Also, they discussed one of Geertz's famous projects showcased in her TED Talk, which was a rotating shoulder device that she wore, and they talked about how difficult it was to create. Simone Geertz talks about the shoulder rig, which is a platform that goes around the shoulder and can hold objects like popcorn. The device slams whatever is on it into the user's face, which Simone finds funny but doesn't know why. She also talks about a joke that she made during her TED Talk that was cut out. The joke involved a chopping machine that chops vegetables and has two giant knives. The machine ends with a gif of it chopping up a banana. Simone's punchline was that the gif is the perfect response to anyone who sends you unsolicited dick pics. Although she feels bad that the joke was cut, she thinks that her comedy is often misinterpreted as being for children when, in reality, she is doing it for herself. Simone also discusses how she tries to be a decent role model while acknowledging that humans can make mistakes. Simone Gertz discovered that she had a brain tumor just after her TED Talk. Her right eyelid had been gradually swelling and she assumed it was just allergies. Her mom encouraged her to get checked by a doctor and she had an MRI scan which revealed a brain tumor the size of a golf ball. Simone had surgery to remove the tumor, but parts of it were too difficult to remove and it kept growing. So she had to undergo radiation treatment for two years. Simone has revealed that she was scared throughout the process, but tried to remain positive by using humor. She named her tumor Brian and being grateful for the experiences she has had. The recovery process was not linear and radiation treatment was draining and made her feel like she was high on drugs. Simone also struggled with the idea that she might not be able to have children. She explains that she was on medication that caused her to feel like she was going crazy and that the recovery process was mostly physical from having her skull opened and a large chunk taken out. Simone admits that she was hesitant to think critically about her doctor's advice and was scared to question them as she just wanted to trust them. Going through illness changed her relationship with life and death by forcing her to redefine what it means to be good. She learned to be more gentle and delicate with herself and others, to take care of her biological vehicle, and felt grateful that her body was ready for the surgery due to the healthy habits she had practiced throughout her life. She speaks about how amazed she was with the resilience of the human body after her brain surgery, which left a void in her head. But over time, her brain has recovered so much that it now resembles a normal looking brain. Geertz then discusses her creation of the everyday calendar, which she developed to track her daily meditation practice. She wanted a calendar that was not a notebook and could serve as a form of accountability art. To make the calendar, she launched a Kickstarter campaign that was a year late in shipping. Geertz had to learn a lot about manufacturing because it is entirely different from building one-off products. The tooling, quality control, and time requirements are entirely different when manufacturing products on a large scale. Despite these challenges, Geertz still loves the product development aspect of her business and enjoys designing products for manufacturing. She is excited that she has sold thousands of her calendars and sees them being used all over the world. Simone brings up the fragility of her business model as an influencer. She explained that if she is not well enough to produce the content, everything stops, as it is such a significant part of her revenue stream. Due to this, she felt the need to diversify her business and start a product business. Simone decided to leverage her YouTube channel as the R&D department of her product business, using it to test her audience and gather feedback. She explained that she separates her brand from her product, creating something independent of her as she wanted the product to run even when she retires her face. Simone recently launched a puzzle that has one missing piece, labeling it as the world's first officially incomplete puzzle. 
She sees a small roster of products as an upfront investment that will take a while for her to learn, so she started small to learn more about product design. These are products that are easy to produce and affordable for consumers. However, Geertz has bigger and more ambitious products in the pipeline, which follow her brand's tagline of unique solutions to everyday problems. She explains that the process of creating these products involves sketching, brainstorming, drawing, and creating schematics. Gertz gives an example of her everyday calendar, which started as a prototype with physical mechanical toggle switches, but was later changed to a touch interface due to the cost. She acknowledges the limitations of working within a certain price bracket, noting that maintaining margins is difficult. However, she also emphasizes the importance of not sacrificing design for cost, as creating the most beautiful version of a product is crucial before scaling back. Simone Geertz talks about her conversion of a Tesla Model 3 into a pickup truck. Geertz explains how she's not a car person and brought in a large team to help her turn the Tesla into a truck since she was concerned about safety. Although she wasn't too concerned about aesthetics, the final product looked great. Geertz also mentions how she tends to reuse parts from her previous projects and has gotten better at keeping them intact rather than disassembling them. She even jokes about the odd requests she receives from viewers, such as putting weapons on her robots or adding a dildo to a project. Geertz also built a breakfast robot that pours milk and cereal and feeds her with a spoon. These projects were challenging because everything had to be in the right location and there were many takes before everything worked properly. Despite the challenges, Geertz finds joy in building robots and discovering her own voice while creating content for her YouTube channel. While there is a certain degree of acting involved, Geertz feels that she's mostly just playing herself, albeit a slightly condensed and humor-filled version on YouTube. Simone then talks about how making things truly shitty or failing spectacularly can be a skill because it makes the object or robot more watchable. She suggests that the value of a flawed robot lies in its endearing nature, and that it should be partially flawed to make it more anthropomorphized and emotionally connectable. She believes humans gain value from interacting with dynamic objects, and roboticists should lean into that rather than run away from it. Simone also brings up the emotional damage caused by humans interacting with robots, suggesting people don't consider emotional damage. She even gives an example of an app called Replica, where people have an intimate relationship with an AI chatbot and get hurt. Simone then talks about the potential of replicating oneself in AI form and having them interact with each other for dating purposes. She believes human technology interaction is interesting and believes any technology company that figures out a way for people to genuinely love their robots has a lot to gain. However, she notes that it can also be scary as companies can manipulate people if they become emotionally attached to their robots. Simone Geertz discusses some of her past and recent projects. One of her favorite creations is the Proud Parent Machine, which is a motorized arm that provides parents with a pat on the back for a quarter. Simone also describes the process of building a large music box that uses bubble wrap to play different tones into a pan flute. Simone's process involves identifying everyday problems and finding ridiculous and spectacular ways to solve them. Though her earlier projects were more whimsical and humorous, she now focuses on product design to solve everyday problems. She explained the challenges associated with the bubble project, including programming the barrel to pop different bubbles perfectly aligned on the bubble wrap. Simone spent weeks finding the best material to pop bubble wrap. She found that a squishy material like a yoga mat material in between the two rigid tubes could prevent the air from escaping, resulting in a better, reliable pop. Simone also mentioned the different qualities of bubble wrap where there was a lot of transference between different bubbles. She spent weeks studying bubble wrap and finding ways to increase pop reliability. When the host asked if she ever thought of publishing academic work on bubble wrap, Simone said that she had never thought of it. However, she believed that someone might have studied bubble wrap deeply. Later in the podcast, Simone talked about her experience of studying physics at MIT for a year and then dropping out. She realized that she was there for the wrong reasons, and it was not the right fit for her. She loved math but did not want to study it for 10 hours a day. She believes that she is a generalist through and through, and college did not offer her that kind of flexibility. Simone advised people to go to a workplace where people are doing the job they want to do, to see if they like it before committing to college. She also emphasized 
the high cost of college in the U.S. and suggested exploring alternative paths like trade schools and apprenticeships. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of the Pod Slice.